Uh, let us see few more questions on design and analysis of algorithm. Uh, what is empirical analysis? What do you mean by empirical analysis? So this is uh, performed by running a program, implementing the algorithm on a sample of inputs and analyzing the data which is observed. So this involves generating pseudo random numbers. This is actually implementing your algorithm and then running it a certain input and then analyzing. This is empirical analysis. Define convex hull problem. Convex hull. We have set of points. They may be finite or infinite in a plane or on the plane, uh, which is called as convex. If for any two points P and Q out of these finite or non-finite uh, finite, uh, set, the entire line segment with the endpoints at P and Q belongs to the set. Okay, so if we have this P, so this is P point, this is Q. So what convex has mean that you can have any number of points on a plane, which is what we call as convex. If these two points, any of these two points, they are in set, then the entire line segment with the endpoints P and Q, they belong to this set. What is divide and conquer algorithm? As the name suggests, first we divide and then conquer. So this is uh, a way of designing your algorithm. You can solve a problem by dividing it into smaller instances, smaller parts, and then we solve them recursively. Then once we solve them, we combine them, and then we formulate the original instance of the problem. What are the features of algorithm visualization? Visualization. First is uh, the consistency, interactiveness, close, clear and concise, and then emphasizing the visual component. These are the algorithm visualization features. Define big O notation. This is order no. This is big O notation only. And as I said earlier also, this is very important. That is uh, why we are discussing it again and again. There has to be a function gn which is guiding. This is the lower bound of this function tn for certain constant values or certain point beyond which tn will always be greater than or equal to gn. So this is uh, gn will always guide the tn. It should be greater than or equal to gn. So this is a bigger notation. What is algorithm visualization? It is defined as the use of images to convey some inform, uh, useful information about algorithm. So this is just a this is what uh, we were we were saying on this uh, question also that visual representation of algorithm is our algorithm visualization. Define static algorithm visualization. Static algorithm visualization. So this static uh, algorithm visualization it shows an algorithm progress through a series of still images. Okay. While we have this algorithm animation, this shows a continuous movie like a presentation of an algorithm operation. These are new techniques how we can analyze the algorithms. What is Fibonacci series? This is also a problem which is generally uh, given to students like Victorial and Fibonacci series. And what it does is, if you have two values, say you have 0 and 1, the next next value will be the addition of previous two values. That will be 1. 1 plus 1 is uh, 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And 3 plus 2 is 5. And so on and so forth. So Fibonacci numbers, they are important sequence of integer which every element is equal to the sum of its immediate predecessors. So there are various algorithms for computing this Fibonacci numbers uh, with various eff efficiency. So, uh, you know, people learn this to understand the efficiency. What are the classification of algorithm visualization? As I said, there are two types of uh, algorithm visualization, static and dynamic. What is brute force? Like uh, the way you use your broom or uh, you clean your house with a broom. This is a straightforward approach to solve uh, the problem, usually directly based on the problem statement and definitions of the concept involved. What are the different criteria used to improve the effectiveness of algorithm? First, inputs means zero or more quantities are externally, externally applied. Then we have output, at least uh, one quantity is produced. Then definiteness means each and every instruction should be clear and unambiguous. What do we mean when we say finiteness? If we want to trace out the instruction of an algorithm, then for all case, the algorithm terminates after a finite number of steps. So finiteness means terminating after a finite number of steps. What is effectiveness? Every instruction should be very clear and effective. What is recursive call, calling itself? Algorithm is said to be recursive if the same algorithm is invoked by itself, by the body itself. There are two types of uh, recursive algorithm, direct and indirect. So what is direct? What is direct recursive call? An algorithm that calls itself is a direct recursive call. For example, this is a function and it is calling itself. This is the function itself. 
Then what is indirect recursive call? An algorithm is said to be indirect recursive call. If it calls another algorithm, which in turn call A, A is calling some algorithm B, and then B is calling A. In the way this uh, example is. Now what happens here is, this is function 1. The main function is function, this function is calling function 1, and this function is calling again this function only. So this is a recursive call only, but an indirect recursive call. List the application areas of algorithm visualization. You know, there's research and education, various uh, places where this algorithm visualization can be uh, used or employed. Give some example of an uh, animation system. You have Balsa, Tango, Zeus. Define interpolation and you have defined extrapolation also. So interpolation is these they deal with values with the samples range. So extrapolation is what? It deals with the value of n that are outside the range of the sample values. I'll tell you how. Interpolation and extrapolation. Now, you have two values here. You don't have values, say, here. Finding a value on the basis of these two values is interpolation. Now, these two values are available with you and you want to find a value which is outside. So, finding a value outside when you are provided with two values which are, this value is out of, outside the range of these two values. So, using this value to, to to extrapolate or to judge, find out the value which is outside the range is the extrapolation. Define profiling. What is profiling? This uh, is used in, uh, it is a very important resource in empirical analysis of an algorithm running time. What it does is measuring time spent on different segments of a problem can actually pinpoint a bottleneck in the program performance. That can be missed by say any abstract deliberation about the algorithm basic operation. So getting that data, which is uh, considered to be a point which can be a bottleneck is called the profiling. What is meant by basic operations? What can be a basic operation? This basic operation, which is contributing to the most toward running time. So this is the operation, which is our concern, which is giving the highest amount of, uh, uh, you know, thrust to the efficiency time or running time. So it is the most uh, time consuming operation in the algorithm in reverse loop. You can say like that. This is, these are the basic operations. What is articulation point? In a, in a graph, a vertex of a connected graph G is said to be an articulation point, a graph. You have in graph various a vertex and edges. So, vertex is known as an articulation point. If its removal with all edges and incident to it breaks the graph into disjoint pieces. So, if you remove that vertex, the graph will be disjoint graph. That is articulation point. You have list the advantages of binary search. You know, there are various... Uh, advantages. First is time is very less, processing fast, the number of iteration is quite small n by 2. You have to just check the half of uh, the input items. Uh, binary search which is used in Fibonacci series also, it involves only addition and subtraction rather than this division. You don't involve this division. It is a, a priori analysis that means uh, it can be analyzed before execution also. What is binary search tree then? You know people are often confused with binary tree and binary search tree. In a binary search tree, either it is empty or each node has tree contains an identifier and is identified to the left of t, they are less than the identifier at the root node t. Those on the right subtree, they are greater than the identifier on the right node and the left and right, this, this is greater than or equal to, right? The left and right subtree of t are also binary search tree. So if you have, you just consider these to be subtrees, not only nodes, but subtrees. So all the values or the elements here will be less than the root element. All the values on the right subtree are equal to or greater than the root node. And this goes for, you know, the tree subtrees are again, they are binary search tree only. Explain the principle using quick sort. This is also a classical example of uh, algorithm analysis. This is a partition method using a particular key. The, the given table or the values is partitioned into two subtables so that the first, the original key will be in, in its proper position in the sorted sequence. And then all keys to the left of this key will be less in value and all keys to the right of it will be in greater values. What it means is if you have certain values. So we partition these values, not, not necessarily n by 2 because uh, if you partition it in the middle, it will become the binary uh, or sort only. So what we do is uh, we partition the input element in such a way 
that the left values are less than this value, right values are greater than this value. But these values are not necessarily ordered because this is the task of quicksort to order them. What is the binary search? We have talked about binary search a lot now. Let us see. This is one of the most efficient searching technique. But it requires these order means order numbers means sorted values in ascending order. Now, if you want to search an element in the list, the binary search splits the list and locate the middle element of the list. Okay. What it does is these are ascended order elements. We go to the center point and um, find the mid value. Find it, find whether the value is here or not. If it is not, see whether this value is less than this center value. We go to this point or take this half. If this value is greater than the central value, we go to this partition. We just ignore it. This is the most efficient uh, searching algorithms, a type of searching algorithms. What is the objective of sorting algorithm? Of course, to order, rearrange the items. Uh, and that can be used as an input to searching algorithms. Why is bubble sort called by the name? You know what happens in this bubble sort? The uh, if you imagine a tub, then the bubble, the smallest element or the largest element, it depends. Uh, you know you want descending or ascending. So the element will bubble up to the top, and the highest one be will be here, or the lowest one will be here, and the highest one will be here. That is why we call it as a uh, bubble sort. And this is quite simple. You know, straight straight forward uh, algorithm. What we do is we just compare two values. Which are just next to each other, and then we find which is greater or less, and we just uh, swap them. And this goes and those goes and on and on. And for in one iteration, one value will fi find its exact position. Then we again perform it for the rest value. What are the three variations in transform and conquer? So you have seen divide and conquer. Now transform and conquer means there are various uh, variations, but principal variation of transform and conquer techniques. For example, we have instance uh, simplification. We can have representation change and problem reduction. Explain principle of optimality. When 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 will you say that this is an optimal solution? The principle of optimality says that an optimal solution to any instance of an optimization problem is composed of optimal solution to its sub instances. This is the principle of optimality. What is the need for finding minimum span tree? Why do you need this MST? No. You know, spanning tree uh, kind of tree has uh, many. Application actually, this is a graph problem. It's not exactly a tree. So any connected graph with n vertices must have at least n minus one edges. Okay, and all connected edges with this n minus one edge are tree. They are trees by itself. So if the node of this graph represents a cities, I'm giving an example. If uh, nodes of this graph G represent cities and edges represent possible communication link between these two cities. Then the minimum number of links needed to connect to n cities is n minus one, right? So it is necessary for finding MST minimum spanning tree. This is the actual problem which I just explained. What is critical path? Uh, the path of longest length is called the critical path. Just understand that the critical path because we are concerned about this path only while finding the you know various um, problems, solution to various problems. For example, you have a tree. What is spanning tree? As we have seen in MST, let us see what is spanning tree first. If we have a graph with V and E, e vertices and edges, it is an undirected connected graph. You don't have directions. So a subset of this graph is a spanning tree of G. If this tree is a tree, it has to be a subset of this graph only, but it needs to be, be following the properties of tree also. What is dynamic programming? This is an algorithm design technique. As we have seen, um, you know, divide and conquer, and this is sol solution problems. Okay. You have an algorithm design scheme like dynamic programming for solving problem with overlapping subprograms. So the smallest subprograms are solved only once, and recording we record the result in a table from which the solution to the original problem is obtained. This is the dynamic program programming concepts. What is greedy method? What do, you know name is suggest greedy means it wants something always. Again, it is a most straightforward design, which is applied for uh, chain making problems. Chain making problems. So, what it suggests is constructing a solution to an optimization problem through various steps, and each expanding a per partially constructed solution obtained so far until a complete solution of the problem is reached. And in each step, the choice made must be feasible, or greedy, locally optimal, and irrevocable. So, greed is involved everywhere. 
optimality, feasibility, and irrevocable at each and every steps. 15 is this the advantage of greedy algorithm. First is greedy algorithm produces a feasible solution. Greedy method is very simple to solve, quite simple to solve a problem. And also it provides an optimal solution directly. Feasible also optimal. Define the term control abstraction. Control abstraction is a procedure whose flow of control is clear but whose primary operations are specified by other procedures whose precise meanings are left identified. You know, this is a control abstraction. List the application of MST. Uh, MST, minimum spanning tree, is used to obtain an independent set of circuit equations for an electric network, for example. We have seen, uh, we have introduced this um, thing in the last question. There can be another uh, applications also. Another application of spanning tree arises from the property that a spanning tree is minimal subgraph G such that such that this VG is equal to VG dash is VG if this G dash is connected. What is avial tree? This is a binary search tree having a balance factor for every node. And this balance factor, which is defined as the difference between heights of the node, left and right of subtree. So height difference between the heights of the left no, nodes left and right of t, if it is either 0 or plus 1 or minus 1, then this is where we need some balancing. Uh, this is called binary uh, tree, binary search tree, the nodes are aligned like this. So to reduce or to avoid this kind of situation, we use a tree. What do you mean by row major and column major? If you have a matrix, the maximum elements in a particular row is called the row major and uh, the maximum elements in a particular column is called the column major. Row and column. Minimum cost spanning tree. What is minimum cost spanning tree? A minimum cost spanning tree of a weighted connected graph is its spanning tree of the smallest weight where the weight of the tree is defined as the sum of the weights on all its edges. So you combine all the edges. Okay you uh, find out a tree or which is considered to be a minimum cost spanning tree you consider this weight which has, which is uh, because the tree is weighted and connected so the tree which is having the smallest weight is minimum cost spanning tree so this these were some uh, design and analysis uh, question and answers and uh, we'll see more uh, in coming session thank you so much